Galatians chapter 5, and we will read verse 16. The Bible says this, I say, then walk in the spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So notice in verse 16, Paul says, this I say then. So Paul is now saying what? Walk in the spirit. Why should you walk in the spirit? So you don't fulfill the lust of the flesh. So what's very important to understand is that within our old nature, so our old nature is our flesh. Within our flesh, we go through all kinds of sins, lusts of the flesh, whether it be something sexual or drug-related or even social media. Uh huh. So whether it be those things, the key to not fall into the lust of the flesh is by walking in the spirit. So a lot of people say, well, what can I do then to conquer this addiction? And then the simple answer is, well, you got someone inside you and that's the Holy Spirit. Amen. So if you think about this, why do you keep messing up in the flesh? Because you're focusing, you're concentrating, you're walking in this flesh here. But let's say you switched it around, you focused and concentrated and walked in the spirit, then what's going to happen? Then it's going to override the lust of the flesh. So that's why it is very important, brother and sister in Christ, to read your Bible. It is so important. Oh, I'm struggling with the same sin again, Pastor. Well, then sometimes it might be best if I ask you, how many, did you, when's the last time you read your Bible? Or prayer, when's the last time you prayed? Now, Big Chuck, who's been through AA, and he's been sober for over 18 years now, praise the Lord, a heroin addict, he usually asks them this, when's the last time you went to church? He believes that, he mentioned this, which is very true with addicts, is that when you're alone, that's one of the greatest dangers, is when you're alone, then you got temptation and all kinds of things open. So it is important that you get out and then you go to church. When's the last time that you led a soul to salvation? So I don't have to keep writing here. Well, I'm struggling getting rid of this worldly music, Pastor. When, when's the last time that you were singing hymns, huh? Are there hymns that you downloaded in your iPod, or do I see Lady Gaga in there? So the thing is this, is that eventually people will tell you who are very strong into worldly music that once they got into godly hymns and Christian music, that got rid of the worldly music. So it is important that you yield to the inner man in you. Brother Jack, <clears throat> before he even came to our church, he had an electric guitar and a drum set. But what did he do? He got rid of all of that, and then now he's the song leader in our church. See, what's that? That's walking in the spirit, not in the flesh. So that's a big blessing. So it is important to do that. Okay, so if you're struggling with your lust of the flesh, one of the key verses is this one. This is one of the verses to memorize, actually, concerning about temptation struggles. This I say, then walk in the spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Let's look at verse 17. This is an important verse. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit. Okay, so the flesh has a strong lust against the spirit. And the spirit against the flesh. It's the same thing with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, the spiritual size, has a strong lust against the flesh. Now, here's something that we got to understand. Some people get confused because it seems like right here that the Holy Spirit has a lust problem. See that? So that seems to be a problem and maybe an error in your King James Bible, especially when you look at the book of James. Let's look at James. Now keep your hand at Galatians 5 because we're going to return to these passages here. We're going to look at the book of James and then look at chapter 3, James chapter 3. Now you'll notice right here that the spirit within, it can... Uh, have a lust to, it has a strong lust within. Let's look at uh, James chapter 4, verse 5. James chapter 4 and verse 5. Do ye think that the scripture saith in vain, the spirit that dwelleth in us lusteth to envy? Okay, so you gotta understand this is that envy is not a sin. What? Lust is not a sin. 
Oh, pastor, you're blaspheming right here. No, here's the idea. The idea is this, is that, isn't it true that when you read the Bible that the Old Testament Jews, they killed their enemies? Now, was, isn't killing a sin? See, the idea is this. A certain character is a sin depending on the context that it is used. For example, didn't you know that God's name is Jealous? No, I don't believe that. No, look at the book of Exodus. Exodus chapter 20. God says, my name is Jealous. Didn't you know at the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 10, it talks about covet earnestly the best gifts. Covet. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, excuse me. So, why? Because covet means there's something you should desire more than you currently have. And that should be the case with the spiritual gifts. You should desire more than what you have now as a spiritual gift, Amen. according to 1 Corinthians 12. God does have a right to become jealous or envious if you're cheating on him with another person. Because why? You are the wife of Jesus Christ, the Bible says. Same thing with lust. What is lust? A strong desire. So yes, the Holy Spirit has a strong desire against the flesh, and the flesh has a strong, deep desire against the Spirit. That's the idea. So we see that the case with envy and lust at James chapter 4, as well as Galatians chapter 5. Now let's return to Galatians 5. So that's the idea. So the Spirit, it is accurate to say it lusts. Now when you have these two beings together, what happens when they collide? They are contrary one to the other, so that he cannot do the things that he would. There's a huge colliding over here. When these two things collide, you got to understand this, there is no intermingling. They will always be contrary one to the other. <clears throat> so what is important to understand is that this verse is a powerful verse to use against worldly, fleshy things that are sinful and trying to justify that as something spiritual. For example, there are these people who claim, but you know, I felt the Holy Spirit. I increased my love for Jesus because I was listening to Hillsong. And you know what? People are, there are, believe it or not, there are some people who genuinely mean that. Paul Washer, who believes in lordship salvation, in other words, he believes that unless you really repent as a sinner, you repent of your sins that you're not really saved. But that hypocrite, he was listening to some sinful worldly music, and he said, you know, I can honestly tell that this was not worldly, but the Holy Spirit in here. What? Is he off his rocker? You know why? The reason why is this. They're concentrating on the words of their music, which is why they have to keep repeating, repeating, repeating words. So they confuse the words of the music, the words which are spiritual, with, with the music, which is fleshy. Now, if you doubt me, if you think that I'm crazy, I'm nuts, and I'm like, oh, you, uh, you don't know what you're talking about, Pastor. There is such a thing as... Uh, secular music that can uplift Jesus Christ. Contemporary music really makes me draw closer to Jesus Christ. The simple answer is this, then I dare you, I double dare and triple dare you to take every contemporary music you can find out there that is not Christian and Christian, put them all in a random mode and put 200 of them and e completely erase the words and how many can you guess right which one is Christian, which one is not Christian? Now, don't fool me, okay? You don't fool me. Go fool your grandma, man. So the thing is, is that you're just acting all ignorant and dumb that, oh, you know, I can use this for Jesus. No, you're, you're just making up excuses because it pleases your flesh. It pleases your flesh. So the thing is this, is that the music is fleshy. The words may be spiritual in the contemporary Christian music that you hear. But what did Galatians say? The flesh and the spirit are contrary the one to the other so that he cannot do the things that he would. These two do not combine, friend, no matter how much you justify it. So this verse is very powerful, Galatians 5.17. Use that verse 
against contemporary Christian music, against any sinful thing out there. Well, you know, it's, it's okay. Jesus drank alcohol. There's such thing called moderation, moderate drinking, you know. Yeah, there's this one sinner right here nodding his head. You know what he's been doing. So. But anyway, so the thing is this, is that there are people who justify sin as something spiritual, right? What you need to do is pull up this passage and show them that the Holy Spirit has a strong, a strong desire against what your flesh wants. And to co combine the two together is complete blasphemy to the Holy Spirit because it has a strong desire against your strong desire. Because let's prove alcohol is their lust of the flesh. Ask them, can you go without alcohol for five years? Ask them that. And then let's see if it's really Holy Spirit sensitive or fleshy sensitive when they drink. See, that's evidence. It's the lust of the flesh. Lust, see? What does the flesh do? It has a strong lust, strong desire. That proves alcohol. If you, go, uh, if you, don't, if you drink without it for five years, it proves that it's some kind of lust of the flesh because you have a strong craving, strong desire to do it legalizing marijuana and all that kind of stuff, mankind always wants to justify their sin. That's right. All right, let's return to our main text here. So let me review verse 17. Now remember, this is verse by verse Bible study. So as I explain each verse, I want you to understand that explanation yourself. That way you can be able to grow more in knowledge when you read the Bible more yourself. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit. Correct. And the spirit against the flesh. That's right, the Holy Spirit has a strong lust desire against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other. So they contradict each other. They're not the same. So that he cannot do the things that he would. So you can't even do the things that you would want to do. See, here's the thing. You can't even function or do anything when these two contradict each other. So when you're playing this Hillsong music, and when you're dancing around like Toby Mac does, like a monkey, when you do that, you can't even do it. You can't even perform. You can't even musically perform. Why? Because these two are contradicting each other. There is no such thing. All right, let's look at verse 18. But if he be led of the Spirit, see, if you're led by the Holy Spirit, this is a good verse, ye are what? Not under the law. Now, you heard me quote this verse a few times when we went through Galatians. Remember, the Lord delivered us from what? The Old Testament law, right? So we were made free from the Old Testament law. That's why we don't stone people to death today. Amen. So God delivered us from the Old Testament law. Why? Because it was replaced... Remember, what is this called? The law of the Spirit, right? We talked about that quite often. So when Seventh-day Adventists or other people try to pull up verses that, no, we're supposed to keep the commandments, keep the law, and they'll pull up New Testament verses to prove it, <clears throat> what you can come back against them is to point out, no, the law and the commandments that we're keeping is under the law of the Spirit, Remember, what is this called throughout the book of Galatians? It's called the law of the what? Flesh, right? Now, wouldn't this contradict what Paul said, the flesh lusteth against the spirit, the spirit against the flesh? Paul put that for a reason. He meant that these don't combine together. So, what's going on? What's going on is that the law of the spirit replaced the law of the flesh, the Old Testament law right here. Because it replaced it, the verse says, look, as long as you go by the Holy Spirit, what? You're not under the law. That's so true. Look, if you're just simply going by how the Holy Spirit guides your heart in what is right, what is wrong, you don't need to know every detail and rule and re regulation on the book of Leviticus. You know in your heart what's right and what's wrong guided by the Holy Spirit in you. That's very important. So sometimes a lot of people will say, well, why doesn't God write a rule about dress codes? You know, we're supposed to dress this way with this kind of color of a shirt. And then a tie, the Bible never mentions wearing a tie. And the Bible mentions this and this and this. Why, does a, why doesn't the Bible give every detail regulation? The Bible never said how long my skirt was and blah, 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 blah. You got to realize this, friend, is that, look, if you truly have the Holy Spirit in you, convicting you, you already know, and we don't need to detail you out a full, thick, 
handbook on dress codes and what to do in our church, which music to listen to, what to watch and what to hear. We don't have to do that. That's why the Bible never did that. Why? Because God's a person who likes to test your heart. And you always make up excuses, something spiritual to do that sin. But God knows your heart, and because of that Holy Spirit inside you, he's going to convict you. And if you ignore and neglect and reject the conviction of the Holy Ghost, he's going to record that every time at the judgment and prove it out to you. That's why this law is more powerful than this law. Because you notice that the Pharisees and Sadducees, they try to go by this law right here. And they try to catch Jesus by this law. And then Jesus, what did he do? He tried to aim at their heart instead. He always did that. He argued the law back against them and scripture back against them, but he always aimed at the heart. And that is most effective against even heretics that you argue with. It's when you aim for their heart and you convict them. Okay, so let's look back on our main text. So Galatians 5.18 is an important verse to mark down that we're under the law, of this, that we don't have to go by the Old Testament law because we, as long as we go by the Holy Spirit. 